Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Live 10 browser. So if you have a look at it, it doesn't look like a great deal has changed but what we do have is some real handy new workflow features. So as you can see we've got our standard categories, we've got Max for Live, we've got a few little changes to the icons but other than that it's looking pretty similar. But now we go to edit here, what we can actually do is we can get rid of any of these that we might not want. So in this case I'm not really going to need clips and there may be some other ones depending on how you work that you might not need so you can just tick these off and when we click done you can see that has now been minimized and you might also notice we've got these collections here and what I could do is I could click on these to activate them but instead of doing that what I can actually do is I can use hotkeys 1 to 7 on the keypad and I can simply give anything I want a color tag so for example if we go to my custom plugins what I can do here is I can go in, say amplifiers or whatever I want to go in. Maybe I want to do the entire plugin chain and I can just hit one and that's now got the red dot to let me know that it's now in collection one. So what I could then do, say if I wanted to do some more devices, if we go to audio effects, hit one and we can now see they're all going to be in the collections. And then it obviously makes sense there to rename this to something else. What I'd go for is something along the lines of signature sounds and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe all of these. So now if we click on signature sounds it's now going to be completely empty because we've wiped it and what I'll do is I'll bring up another four and we're going to rename these. We'll go signature sounds, go to plugins, recycling and context loops. So just so you can get a bit of an idea of what I'm trying to do here is when you're trying to build yourself as an artist you obviously want to get yourself a signature sound and the best way of doing that is as you finish each track go through your tracks and this is where the recycling comes in as well go through your tracks and if there's any certain sounds that you really like so say for example we'll go for this kick drum so if I go command and T and make a new audio track what we can do is simply freeze this and now that this has been frozen all we have to do is just drag this down here and we can see this is going to populate and yet another new feature in Live 10 is we can now actually drag this from where it is in the project straight into the browser, into our places or our current project or user library. And what it will do is it will create a file and then we'll be able to see the sample there just as if we'd consolidated it. So what we can then do from there is nice and easily just give this either a hotkey one, two, three or four and put it in one of our collections folders. So at the moment, the way I've done this, bearing in mind that it's referencing the file, you can see down in the bottom, we've actually got the entire frozen track as opposed to just this clip. So if we wanted just this clip, remember you've got to command J first to consolidate. And now you can see that's given it a timestamp. And now we have just that single clip instead of the entire frozen track, which we can now tag. So whether it's a sample or a loop or something you spent a lot of time on, like in this case, I've spent a lot of time sculpting this kick. I really like it and it's going to be part of my signature sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag that now as signature sounds. And then I might also go for context loops as well. And what I mean by context loops is when I'm working, I want to be able to get an idea down really quickly. So I need a set of loops which I can just throw down and it's going to allow me to get nice and creative. So I'm talking your standard kick drum that you always use, your hi-hat, your clap, and maybe a bass line or something like that. Something that you can get down and it's going to allow you to jam around with ideas without messing around with attack and decay times. It's just a few loops that just work. Likewise with recycling, so some other handy things. If we go to current project and we can open this up, say this is one of our older projects. In fact, we'll go to a backup and we're going through our old projects. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to build our signature sound or maybe we've got a whole ton of projects and absolutely none of them have actually been released or used. So we want to start recycling these parts. So what we can actually do is just start going in and then we can just open up some of these folders. And that's yet another new feature in Live is that now if you look here, we can actually see groups and groups within groups in this folder hierarchy system. So you can actually see that the image there is slightly different for the groups. And if we go down, we've also got another hat loop in there as well called cut and paste loop. I can open that up and then from there we can drag this into the browser. And what we can now do is we can start to keep on adding to our library. So we could right click and instead of actually dragging that in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go show in browser.
And there we have it right there. And then all I have to do from here is just press free. And we've now got that into our recycling. So now that we've got that saved into our collection, we could actually delete this cut and paste loop group back out of this project if we don't actually need it to be there because we've saved it where we need it to be now. So you can see we can go through these collections, we can see the colours and we can also assign multiple colours like what I've done with this one here. And how you want to organise this is totally up to you. So you might actually do it by genre and have folders that have got everything from samples to audio devices to instruments all in the same folder. So now I'll build on the go to plugins collection that I've created. So with this, my advice is to try and keep this list as small as possible to your absolute die hard core plugins that you use all the time. Because there's no point having a big list of plugins like I do here in my main plugin directory, as it's just going to serve as a distraction and it's going to take away from actually moving forward with tracks. So there I've got FM8, Massive and Complete Control. And remember, I could also put in some stock plugins or some racks if I want as well, because these folders don't stipulate the difference between racks, plugins, any sort of devices or custom samples. So I can use them for whatever I want. So the next update to Ableton Live's browser is quite a subtle one, but it is handy when we're trying to audition samples. So what I'll do is I'll just loop up a bit of the project for context. And whilst this is playing, I'm going to go into the sample library or wherever we want to go within our library and we're just going to audition some loops and as we'd expect what it's going to do is it's going to quantize these loops in time with the project and this just means that it's nice and easy for us to be able to hear whether a loop's going to fit or not and this isn't anything new this is exactly the same as it was in live 9 and then we can also hit the raw button as well and just in case you can't hear that I'll do this with something a little bit more obvious so we'll go for a vintage house melody and you can hear as I click these loops in the browser, we can hear they're firing off just like they would do as a clip in session view and they're perfectly in time with our project tempo. So the problem arises when we're trying to do this with samples and these samples are getting quantized to the beat, these one shots. And because of that, it's quite hard to tell what the actual timbre is because it might be sitting on top of the kick drum. So instead of being able to try and audition these samples exactly on the downbeat, what we can now do is Live knows that a sample is a one shot and when we fire these off, they're just going to play on click. Just to demonstrate that, I can click my way through these samples and you can hear they're firing off straight away and they're not being quantized to the downbeat. So it's nice and easy to hear exactly what they sound like, but also what this means is say if I'm playing a clip and it's however many bars, I don't want to listen to the samples at the downbeat. I'm never really going to put a bongo on the downbeat. So what I can do is I can fire this off and audition it in a way where it's most likely to sit within the clip. So you can see here, just by clicking these, I can hear a syncopated rhythm, which might work, and it's going to give me a much better idea as to whether this bongo is going to suit this loop or not. We also now have the ability to change the names of the folders and the files within the live sidebar. So we can right click here on places and we can give this a much more suitable name if we want simply by right clicking and clicking rename. And this will rename it within Ableton, but it's still going to stay exactly the same. It's not going to break any files or break any of the structure or the samples within the actual computer. So just to show you this, I'll rename blue personal to hard drive. And we'll rename this one as well. We'll call this custom sample library. And if we shift across now and have a look at the file structure on my actual computer, we can see it hasn't renamed the files and they're still intact exactly as they should be. So it just means we can give them a more sensible name for when we're working in Ableton, but it's not going to affect the integrity of our file structure. The final update for the browser is we now have context menus if we right click on the user library or the current project. So what we can do is we can go in show in finder or we can also click on locate if for some reason our user library gets broken. And this is really handy, especially for if you have to install things. So you can look in mind, you can see I've got a few racks. I've also got my complete control uh, racks as well. So it's really handy for being able to locate this instead of diving in through your hierarchy, trying to find it on your computer, which can be quite troublesome sometimes. So that's everything for this video on the browser updates in Ableton Live 10. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to be covering navigation.